Black True Crime is a podcast that researches and discusses murders committed by Black offenders. It is a podcast that anyone and everyone is welcome to enjoy, but it may not be enjoyed by anyone and everyone, so listener discretion is advised. Now, without further ado, this is Black True Crime. Do not go gentle into that good night. Hello, everyone. Hi. What's going on? I'm Kayla. And I'm Kristen. And welcome to Black True Crime. If this is your first time here at the show, welcome and hello. Give me a high sigh. (laughs) Today's case was recommended by one of our listeners. And I'm just going to tell you right now, it sucks. It involves a child and... So we're going to be sad. Mm, Okay. Good to know. Yes. Also, before we start, I had a super crazy week, you guys. You're probably wondering, why is this episode coming on on Friday? What you been doing? You already know what we expect on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Well, I had (laughs) an unexpected trip to Vegas. Very expected group of visitors. And it was fun. Honestly, I had a lot of fun. So Kayla was out here being a whole housewife, y'all. Don't let her fool <laughs> you. Okay. It was taking your business, kids, all of that. Yes. Yes, indeed. Okay. Are you ready to get started? <laughs> Actually, I think they, they listen now. They subscribe to my show. So stop. Shout- hey, y'all. Shout out to Kara, Miss Rosetta. Hey, Kara. <laughs> hey, Miss Rosetta. All right. If you're a parent, you've probably had plenty of scary moments. Maybe your kid took a nasty fall or even ran away for a little while. Well, what happens if that child never comes back home? Today's case will have you wondering, who can I really trust alone with my kids? Mm. Join us as we discuss the disgusting Granville Ritchie. Wow. You know how we feel about kids and stuff. Also, shout out to listener Nelly Fiasco for requesting this case. Hey, Hey. Nelly. What's going on? Mm -hmm. All right. So Granville Ritchie was born on December 5th, 1978. And spoiler alert, he is aging horribly. We will see that very soon. Kristen, what happened in black history in 1978? Okay. Let's begin. Hey, (laughs) y'all. So, you didn't even tell us where we're at. We're in Kingston, Jamaica. Okay? Jamaica. Yeah. Jamaica. So, I know the year was 1978, but if you come back with me two years prior, <laughs> as of December 5th, 1976, in Kingston, Jamaica, two days after Bob Marley had almost been killed by shooters in his home, they held a Smile Jamaica concert at the National Heroes Park in Kingston, Jamaica. Oh, wow. At the time, Bob Marley agreed to play one song for the people, which at the time around 80,000 people had come to attend the Smile Mm -hmm. Jamaica concert. And what was supposed to be one song turned into a 90 minute performance. Despite Bob Marley's injuries, I guess he was just feeling the hype of the concert, Mm -hmm. feeling the hype that he was still alive and kept it going. So if you guys want to hear about Marley's attempted assassination, DM us, comment, let us know, and then I will make a um, behind the scenes black true crime. black true cr- black history girl, moment. Girl, I will make a black we'll come history up with a name. Mm-hmm. I'll make a black history segment on TikTok about it. Dope! Wow, that was really cute and straight to the point, and it gave. Thank you, yeah. sister, for that trip down history lane. Absolutely. Granville Ritchie was born in December, on December 5th, 1978, in Kingston, Jamaica. And he was the oldest of 18 siblings. Mm -hmm. Good God. (laughs) I was about to say, yeah, that's that's an extensive number. But it wasn't all like in the same household by the same woman. His dad was hopscotching and thotting around the town. And he had about four different families. So, Good God. yeah, Greenville <laughs> was one old. blended family. Mm, a lot going on. They need a compound. Something like that. Yeah. And is this something that's common in Jamaica? You guys let us know because mm. I'm not really sure because we don't know. We don't know. Either way, his father was considered to be the Don of the neighborhood. So people Don, f- the Don, Jimmy, the Don, Eddie, the Don. Come on. 
Kristen, <laughs> I'm going to ask you early, please. <laughs> oh, my God. I have a couple of friends from Jamaica, you guys. So I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with this episode. So just bear with us now. Well, we won't be in Jamaica for long. Just want to let oh. you know. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. So his dad was like the dawn of the neighborhood. So people feared and respected him. And this allowed Granville to actually attend a prestigious high school in the area Mm -hmm. and not one of like the, you know, other schools in the Kingston area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kingston was a pretty violent, poor place. And the violence extended to Granville's household. When his father was around, he was mentally and physically abusive toward Granville. So he used to like beat him and not in like a whooping way. As a child, Granville received a significant head injury, but did not receive proper medication or treatment and struggled with those migraines into his adulthood. Like, do you think that head injury was from his father? Most likely. Or just being a kid with football. But I do think the way that they made it sound, he was really getting his ass beat, you know, like violently. So it could have been from that. Jeez. I know. Poor Granville. But despite the setbacks he had initially, he still managed to be productive. He graduated high school. He stayed employed, y'all. He worked at like the Kingston Airport. He worked at a communications company making cell phone towers. So he wasn't like useless. Yeah, period. And he even got an IT certificate. Where's the money residing is where he's going. It's giving smart guy. Mm -hmm. He's a smart guy. Well, Mm -hmm. not that smart guy, but it's giving he's a smart guy. Mm -hmm. People even considered Granville to be like a kind and generous man. If you guys are watching the video, I'm going to put his picture back up here. I don't get that vibe when I see him. Boo. Can we do a what is it given? We can do a what is it giving. Hmm. It's not giving much much of anything. (laughs) (laughs) Not giving giving much. much. Later in life, it will be giving something. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's not ugly. He's not right. cute. No. He's just getting, it's just average. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what caused a change in Granville. I don't know if he was just like a shell of a person around other people, but then turned into a monster later. But he wouldn't be considered kind and generous for very long. Mm. To get an idea of the type of man Granville is deep down, let's take a look at his first real run in with the law. First, Granville did end up making his way to America. Like I said, we wouldn't be in Jamaica long. He migrated here. What year? I don't know. But I do know that he was a grown adult by the time he got here. And by 2013, he'd found himself in Tampa, Florida. Okay. Hey, Tampa. What's going on? Old stomping ground for you girls. Mm -hmm. Well, that same year, Granville was arrested after raping and strangling his then wife, like what okay so the abuse is coming in it is now passed another generation down to granville from his down father. to a hundred percent but the charges were later dropped because the wife claimed she didn't remember the details of what happened that night meaning she's gonna take him back okay i don't know if she took him back but maybe she was just scared and was like listen if I don't tell if I don't send him to jail he'll just leave me alone and it's mm-hmm. fine because you know he was threatening her mm-hmm. Girl, she almost lost her life the first time. Exactly. And whenever you hear of someone straight out of the gate committing such like a terrible crime, it makes you feel like it's almost a guarantee that they tried it before or they've had like fantasies about it for a long time. Right. Or he could have just snapped yeah, and like had always had it in him because of how his dad treated him. Mm -hmm. And it just took something for that kind guy to just snap. Mm, mm, mm-mm. Well, he's disgusting. And he and if he went to jail, like if those charges actually stuck, his future victim may actually still be here. Fast forward to May 2014. 39 year old Granville is living in Temple Terrace. Shout out to Temple Terrace. It's literally where we where we lived. I know. Mm -hmm. Trust me. It's going to get a little bit more close to home. It's creepy. We were I was literally living there. That's when you moved out there. Mm -hmm, Yeah. mm -hmm, mm hmm. And at that time, he just recently met a woman named Ebony Wiley. She described Granville as being charming with his Jamaican accent and was super affectionate with her. Mm. Good googly. <laughs> now, here's a what's it giving. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving 
the movie Orphan. All she needs is the little thing around her yeah. neck. Yeah, it's giving Exorcist. It's, it's giving I chew nails. It's giving shoebox wig. It's giving. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving sew it. No, it's giving glue in. Glue it's, in wig. It's giving. I need an African black soap and dog on it. She's it's giving, possessed. Possessed. <laughs> Y'all, you guys will be able to see this video. I'm going to put this video out for everyone to see because I feel bad at how late we're putting out this episode. It's getting so. scary. Yeah. She's, she's, she's creeping me out a little bit, so I'm going to take her off the screen. <laughs> but yeah, Ebony met Granville, and she was charmed by him right away. He talked about how he planned to be rich in the future, and Ebony was so enthralled that she believed he was the man she was going to marry. Oh, my God. Ebony. Yeah, she's doing a lot. She's doing a lot. And this was after knowing him for only a few days. And we're going to get more into the details of how they met later in the case. Mm-hmm. In that short amount of time, Ebony told Granville a lot about herself, where she worked, what she liked to do, and the fact that she had a nine-year-old goddaughter. That's what she considered the girl to be. And her name was Felicia Williams. Super mm-hmm. cute. Super cute. Aww. Mm-hmm. Hey Felicia. I know. You're so cute. Kayla, I, know. I will cry. She's the cutest a dog on button. I keep my glasses on. Come on. <sighs> yeah, you gotta keep your glasses on. So Ebony said she loved her. She felt really close to the little girl and considered herself like a second mother figure to her. Mm-hmm. But on May 16th, 2014, Ebony was instead complaining about Felicia to Granville, saying that the little girl had gotten her into trouble because she came to her job like unannounced. Mm-hmm. And at the time, Ebony was working at a nursing home. She told Granville that Felicia had also been accused of stealing recently. Mm-hmm. Yes. And she got in trouble for that. So in response to that, Granville was like, maybe we should just counsel the little girl. Just spend some time with her. Talk to her maybe that'll help Mm -hmm. so ebony being just as dumb as a box of (laughs) she was like okay and they picked up felicia after homegirl got off work (sighs) and this is her goddaughter this isn't even her daughter this is someone she has full access to though apparently full access to yeah the mother is comfortable with the woman having you know her daughter not to mention the baby kind of looks like the girl Well, they're not related in any way, shape, or form. but I know, but she kind of looks like her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So after they picked up the little girl, they drove back to Granville's mother's apartment in Temple Terrace. And while they were there, Granville gave Ebony an ecstasy pill and then suggested she go buy some weed. Kayla. This is so annoying. Uh, It's really annoying. Pills and just not the smartest women equal (laughs) dangerous situations for children. Equals dumb. Impre- Equal <laughs> impressionable. <laughs> Easily manipulated. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She so, said dumb. <laughs> so he basically drugged her and then told her to go run an errand. And this left him and Felicia alone in the apartment. Lord mm-hmm. help us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ebony obviously agreed because she's <laughs> intoxicated. Dumb. Yeah, and dumb. And she left and was gone for almost a full hour. Good Lord. Yeah, it was about 50 minutes. And when she came back, Felicia was nowhere to be found. When Ebony asked Granville about her, like, where is Felicia? He said she ran off after he gave her some money to go to the CVS and get her some candy by herself as a nine-year-old girl. Why would you even do that? Why wouldn't you just send her with Ebony? You know, if they were all going to be running errands, just send her with the girl. Exactly. But we're going to get to that later. I'm not sure at this point what Ebony was thinking, but what she does next is just unfathomable. I can't even. She decides to protect Granville and make up a lie about what happened to Felicia. To who? The mama? Felicia's mama? Yes. She's going to be lying to Felicia's mom. She's going to be lying to the police. Everyone that asks. Dumb. So when Felicia's mom found out, obviously she's freaking out. She doesn't know where her, you know, child is. is. Exactly, exactly. So she calls the police. And she also told the police that Ebony was the last person to see her daughter. You know, basically look like, um, my daughter's missing and this is who you need to talk to and look at, period. You know, because she ain't got no information. She ain't telling me the truth. So maybe y'all can get it out of her. Like, it's very skeptical. And she's supposed to be my daughter's godmother are you joking i would have put hands on her you don't know where she is but you, <laughs> you would the last want to see her 
and she's at come on and she's at some random person's house because felicia the mom doesn't know who granville is she doesn't right. know where they are you know what i'm it was saying all because of ebony i would put my hands on ebony yeah ebony would not be here today no shade no shade so the officer almost immediately met up with ebony at a burger king and questioned her about what happened that night and she basically told the same exact story except she said that the house they were at was a woman's named vivian okay okay is that mm-hmm. the mom Name? no no Kristen. she literally pulled it out of thin air wow when police got in touch with the leasing office at the doral oaks apartment complex the tenant on the lease was named gloria gibson the mama correct correct and she actually corroborated the statements that ebony made about felicia she said yeah the little girl ran away and in the midst of that conversation she also admitted that she had a son named trevor okay Okay. Mm -hmm. Just follow. After interviewing Gloria, detectives decided to question Ebony again because shit was was a little finicky. You know, lying. Who was Vivian? It wasn't giving. Thank you, Kristen. Who's Vivian? And after this conversation, police found out that Ebony's friend Vivian was a man. So (laughs) at this point, detectives aren't feeling Ebony. They're like, this hoe is lying. Mm -hmm. And they decided to take her to the Temple Terrace Police Department for further questioning. That's when her story changed again, and she claimed that the man named Trevor was actually in the shower with her, and they were having sex when Felicia ran away. Like, why are you lying? Why are you lying so terribly? Yeah, like, but like, even if old girl just ran off, you know, from a CVS, why yeah. are you lying so hard to protect Granville? I why know. do you feel like you need to protect him? What did he do? What does he have on him? Well, she fell in love with him. Like, she really... Like, at the top, we said she thought she was going to marry him. So she probably was just in La La Land, loving it, and looking stupid. Because that's exactly what she was doing. And in this picture, come on. Kayla, don't bring the picture up after we just (laughs) That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So Trevor wasn't, the name Trevor wasn't giving for the police either. And they knew they should probably look at people close to Gloria since they were at her apartment. You know, she was leasing it, whatever. And while they were looking, they found a picture of Granville Ritchie, like a driver's license photo. That's her son. While in police custody, Ebony still had her phone with her. So she was able to reach out to Granville and give him kind of like a heads up, letting him know that the police now knew that he was at the house when Felicia was there. Mm Mm-hmm. When police reached out to Granville, he definitely like dicked around with them at first. He told them he was going to meet them and then never showed up. And yeah, he was being annoying, but they still got him in custody the next day. So May 16th was the day that Felicia disappeared. And then May 17th, the next day they have Granville in custody. Okay. And he agreed to a videotaped interview. So at this point, he's being cooperative. And by that time, Ebony had changed her story again. Okay. She is so annoying and so unreliable. She's making sure that everything that she says is considered a lie. <laughs> no right. Takes it serious. She's <laughs> doing a very good job of that. Even here. Well, she's here because she's the one that was at the home. She's the one that we know last saw Felicia. So she's a big part of this. She's just a little a liar. She may not be there all the way in the head. I don't either. think she's there all the way. Mm-mm, 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 no. Can somebody really like fantasize and fall in love that deep of someone else to the point mm. where you're completely blind to everything that they do? I think so, Chris. And we see it all the time. Women, it happens to women. It happens to men, non-binary. You know, it happens to everybody. You have your yeah. moments. Even when you have good sense. Even when you have good sense. We all have those moments where, ooh, We just say goodbye to sense for a minute, you know, and just go with what the devil's telling us to do. (laughs) Let's just ride this one out. Let's ride until the wheels fall off. Yep. You learn your lesson one way or another. And Ebony's going to learn hers. Stupid Uh ass. I don't like her. I see. Now, mind you, Gloria, who is Granville's mom, has been sticking to the same story. (laughs) The only one who can. This whole time. Literally. The only one who can. Because she doesn't know that the story is being changed. Like, you know, they told her one thing. She's sticking to it. 
Okay, so her story was she was at the house while Felicia was at the house and she met her, saw her, and that, yeah, she knew that she ran away that day. Mm-hmm. And Ebony just messed all that up for everybody. So now Gloria looks like a liar and Ebony's most definitely one. While police were trying to figure out who was lying and why, a body was found around 4 p.m. off the Courtney Campbell Causeway. Kayla, we know that freaking causeway. Yes, Kristen, we do. We do know that causeway. And the body resembled Felicia's height and like her build, you know, but they wouldn't immediately know. They had to run some tests and, you know, take some pictures and things like that. No. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. since they had granville in custody they were like listen we need to question him we need to know everything that he knows mm-hmm. i feel like early on they had an idea that something was fishy and this man probably had something to do with it and i'm glad they did when they asked him about his relationship with ebony he said he hooked up with her in the past but hadn't seen her until may 16th and that was the first time he met felicia okay he said ebony described felicia as a troubled girl and that he suggested she help her you know like show some patience go out of your way and maybe we can open her eyes up to being a good girl like ew you're a predator can i throw up so later that day they picked felicia up took her to get something to eat and then took her back to the doral oaks apartment where his mom stayed i don't know if she stayed there she rented it she wasn't there he said they then had a conversation with her about her behavior and after that she watched cartoons while he and ebony had sex in another room And when they came out, Felicia was gone. That's his story. He's sticking to it. Okay. He said he sent Ebony to look for Felicia around the apartment complex while he stayed in the house just in case she came back. Mm. Why would he? Why would? Okay. I had Ebony go out. Like She's not even familiar with the area. He he knows the area. I had her go out in these streets. This doesn't make any sense. I'm the dude and I'm staying at the house. Like, you're Mind corny. you, Ebony doesn't even have a car, so she had to drive his car around. Why would you let her drive your car? And she doesn't have a license. <laughs> okay. Foolishness. Mm. Yeah. But the doesn't only thing they sense. did get on one accord with was the whole having sex in another room thing. Because Ebony did mm-hmm. say that they were having sex in the shower. Yeah. Yeah. She did say that. So Ebony obviously never found Felicia, and when Ebony got back to the apartment, Granville dropped her off at Felicia's parents' house, I think. It was either her parents' house or Ebony's grandparents' house. And then he went to Thonotosas. Chris, I couldn't even say this when we lived there, out there. Um, (laughs) Thonotasin. Thonotasin. The noted the, the noted assassin. The noted yeah. assassin. The noted assassin. Found the, assassin. Tono tono no assassin. <laughs> All on. right, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. If People you guys, are sick of you. <laughs> constantly not saying things right. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really practiced it. I promise, and I said it right earlier, and it's gone. Anyway, found assassin. We gonna stick with that. I'll put it on the screen. Y'all can tell me what it is. Send me a voice note or some shit. All right. So, yeah, he went to that place to hook up with another lady friend and then came back to the Thoral Apartments around 11 p.m. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this timeline is kind of important. He said Ebony let him know that the police had been called and that's why he was there. He was willingly speaking to them because he was concerned, too. Once the police were made aware that the body found near the causeway was more than likely Felicia's, especially after they saw the pictures of her face, they interviewed Ebony a third time, but this time she was read her Miranda rights. Period. Because at this point, you're up to something and we don't trust you. You're going to jump. You're lying. Look at you. You're lying. Yeah, she's lying. And once that happened, Ebony's story changed again and in a very big way. So she, I think she was just ready to spill the tea and save her own ass. <laughs> just she was dummy. probably waiting for this moment like, okay, I'm going to ride by him, but... Until I can't. Until I can no longer ride for him. Literally to until for the wheels have fallen off and they are <laughs> off. And I am on the side of the road <laughs> with my ass out. <laughs> literally (laughs) so now 24 year old ebony that probably played a part in how dumb she was too no shade because we've all been 24 chris was 24 last year i've been young and dumb i'm still young and dumb we all make our (laughs) mistakes it is what it is 24 year old ebony claimed that she was felicia's neighbor and ended up growing close to the little girl and her mother and she considered herself to be like a godmother to felicia so 
wasn't officially the godmother, just got close enough to think she had that type of place in the girl's life. Mm -hmm. Ebony said she met Granville, who she knew as Trevor, only three days before Felicia's murder. So do you think this is the, this ain't the truth? No, this is the truth. This This right here. Yeah. Now this is what really happened. Wow. And I can't days. I cannot believe she knew this man for three days, thought she was going (laughs) to marry him. No shade because sometimes you meet the man of your dreams really quick, you know, out the gate. But then you bring him around a child that's not even yours. And then you leave that child alone with him in an apartment that you aren't even aware of. It was a gated community. She couldn't even get back in the gate. He had to give her the code. And he was giving her the wrong code, so somebody else had to let her in. We're going to get to that. But it's just like, you know, none of it is making sense. And at at this point, it's like, this is why I asked the question that I asked. What possesses you to drop your sense after three days? 72 hours with somebody. The dick must have been. Phenom. Kristen. Phenom. Psychotic. world. (laughs) Yeah. Homicidal. I would kill for this. (sighs) Terrible. So when she met Granville, she was walking down the street when he hollered at her while he was driving like a silver Lexus. Well, she's already thinking, oh, he got money, you know, he's extensively older than her. Like, I think at least 10 years at this point. So she's feeling herself. Mm -hmm. And on the spot, they exchanged numbers and got together that night. They went to his apartment where he gave her some Molly and ecstasy. They drank some. Yes, they drank some Hennessy. You already know that's on demon time. And they ended up having sex. She said she fell in love with him that night and even listed him in her phone as my husband. Sip. (laughs) You poor thing. I mean, it's a perfect recipe for a disaster. Molly, ecstasy, Hennessy. Are you joking? Are you joking? That's why these fathers have to love their children because they will go out here trying to look for love in all these other different places. And guess what happens? Fall into a man who's capable of killing yep the second time she ever saw him was on may 16th when she was venting about felicia and when he suggested they pick up you know the little girl to counsel her when grenville asked ebony to go get some weed she said okay and told felicia to come with her so initially it wasn't ebony's idea for felicia to stay behind which Which is makes sense which is like okay she's not that you know not right there like like oh you just stay here but you're the only reason i'm the only reason that you are here no the, you come right. with me right but granville said she shouldn't go ebony would have weed in the car and ebony didn't have her license so he just said it wasn't safe she could get in trouble send her out anyway instead of you going yeah Yeah. When Ebony got back, Granville was being sketchy. And like I said to you guys earlier, he wasn't giving her the right gate code. And if he lives there, he's familiar with it. He knows how to get in there. He has to have the gate code himself to even get in there because he drives. So he kept he kept giving her the wrong one. And she had to just wait until somebody else would let her in. But while he's giving her the wrong code, he's also told her, oh, by the way, Felicia's not here. She hasn't returned from CVS. So like, Ebony is probably like freaking out a little bit. You know, if she has any common sense. sense, if she cares about this little girl at all, she's completely worried. I mean, like, honestly, if it were me while I'm at the gate and this Nick's playing with my time and he right. tells me Ebony's not there, I'm, I'm just, pulling around. I'm pulling listen, around to the CVS. She did. She did. She pulled around to the CVS and looked for the girl for a little bit, but didn't see her. And then came back, still trying to get in contact with Granville. And at this point, he's not answering the phone at all. So she had to wait for somebody to open the door. Yes. Yes, girl. Can you imagine? And I would be pissed. I would be pissed. I would have I would have just ran down the gate. I would have just. <laughs> and it's not my car. Right. I ran down the gate. <laughs> Period. You know what I'm saying? You would get in trouble. Why you let me drive a car? And you know I'm not insured. <laughs> and got no license. Like, you asked for this. And you know Tampa, half of Tampa don't got insurance. <laughs> oh, they got. <laughs> oh, where is the lie? <laughs> <It's facts. laughs> okay. So when she finally gained access to the complex, she saw Granville outside sweating and like shirtless, which is weird because she's like, you had your shirt on. You were fully dressed when I left. What you been doing? And you sweating. What you been doing? What you what you huffing and puffing for? Right. What's What's tea? She didn't think too much about it, though. And they just went back into the apartment. They smoked and they drank and they had sex. 
and Ebony's hotel missing. E- Ebony Felicia. Felicia's or, yes. hotel missing. Felicia is nowhere to be found. Nine year old girl. <laughs> you're responsible for her and you're getting your back blown out. And this child is in the wind. Kayla, are Kristen. we talking since? We can't. I told you. I told you this case sucks. Like it sucks. Sometime after she was done fucking around with Granville, Ebony finally called one of Felicia's sisters and told her that she was missing. And before she left the apartment, her and Granville agreed on a story to tell people when they asked about what happened. And this is the problem that I have. Like, why are you hiding and being shady when you just came back from somewhere and old girl is gone? I can tell she's probably like, okay, I'm scared because she was in my responsibility. She was Mm -hmm. in my control at the moment yeah. and i was supposed to make sure that she was safe now she's gone i'm scared granville well, granville also told her if you tell the police what really happened and she you know whatever you're gonna look like a bad person if you tell police that a man was here and you left the little girl with a man you're gonna look bad so don't tell them i was here tell them your friend was a woman you know he came up with the full bullshit story and of course she ate it Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She didn't want to look bad. And it seemed like he cared. Right. She's like, oh, my gosh, she cares how I'm viewed like ill whole time. There's a whole girl missing. I just can't. I can't. A little girl. Now, with Gloria, when Gloria was confronted with her lies, <laughs> because the mama. Lying, yes, the mama, she admitted it and said she never even met or saw Felicia. So mm-hmm. unfortunately, Gloria never got in trouble for this bold faced ass lie either which is super annoying. It will later be discovered that Granville told Ebony to tell his mom to lie for them. And the three of them even had like three way conversations in this like two day time period, during which Gloria told her son that he needed to get his stuff and go, go, go. Meaning like get out and run? Yes, and run. So does Gloria know more information than we freaking know about what he could have possibly done? In my mind, 100%. But also just as a mom, you probably are like, oh, even if my child didn't do it, they're going to think he did. So he needs to get out of Dodge. You know, I don't want him to go to jail and whatever. Blind loyalty is not loyalty. It's a liability and it's stupid. Yeah, I feel like they're blowing it out of proportion, too, because if the little girl just ran away, that's some stuff on the little girl. Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to make sure that your whole side front and back is protected in case anything happens? Like, because more is known you know Mm -hmm. when police executed a search warrant on the doral oaks apartment on may 18th 2014 they noticed drag marks on the carpet from the patio area through the kitchen and across the living room carpet now these are drag marks that ebony said she didn't notice when she came back to the house and they were still chilling in the house having sex all that type of stuff i wouldn't expect her to notice caleb it's it's believed that what's his name fuck granville Yeah, thank you. Granville had her body still in the house. It was just hidden when him and Ebony were doing their thing. And then when he dropped Ebony off at wherever he dropped her off at, that's when he disposed of baby girl's body. No. Right, right. So it gave me chills. Yeah, that was bad. There were also suitcases lying around as if they'd just been like tossed around the room in a hurry. So maybe he was just trying to find something to hide her in. Wow. Uh, I know. On May 19th, Felicia's remains were officially identified using her dental records. She sustained numerous injuries to her head. Guys, this is going to be not, not good. She sustained numerous injuries to her head, her neck, her body, and her genitalia. It was inflicted on her during the rape and the murder. She had extensive injuries to her neck, her tongue, from forcefully biting it, like during the attack. Aww. And she had bursted blood vessels in her eyes. So she was strangled? Yeah. she Her cause of death was determined to be strangulation. And actually, a detail in court came out about that. But I'm going to let her mom actually tell you guys in a video clip later in the episode. It's so sad. So sad. There was evidence that she fought for her life during the attack. And in the examiner's opinion, the attack lasted for about five minutes. Her the approx- longest five minutes of her life. You know? Her approximate time of death was 5 p.m. on May 16th, and she was put in the water around 1130. And she wasn't found until 3 p.m. the next day. So remember how Granville was like, oh, I went to a girlfriend's house and came back here around 11 Mm p.m. 
you know, that was probably within that time frame that he disposed of. Of the body. The Yeah, the body. Oh, rest in peace, Felicia. <sighs> rest in peace, baby girl. I'm so sorry. She had to fight for her life. Like, oh, anger. Yeah. Look at this piece of shit. Kayla, who is that? I told you. I told you it was going to be a different person later in the episode. Hold on, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> she, she said he's aging horribly. You were right. He looks He looks horrific. He looks, he looks like a, a sausage link stuffed in that suit. Like this type of man seeing him on the street would be like, mm-mm. mm-mm. You know, don't trust you. Mm-mm. He, he looks he, like a sexual offender. He looks unstable, in my opinion. Wow. So he's going to trial for first-degree murder, aggravated child abuse, and sexual battery of a victim under 12. And if he's convicted, he will be facing the death penalty. Period. Love that song. In 2019, it was time for the trial. So she died in 2014, 2095 years. Can you imagine how that was for her mother? It's just brutal. I hate how long the justice Waiting system- Waiting that long. Absolutely. It's just torture. The prosecution felt like they had their case in the bag. They had soil evidence that connected Granville's Lexus to the dirt found where Felicia's body was found. They had cell phone data evidence showing that his cell phone was in the same area around the time Felicia's body was put into the water. And they had the fact that Granville called the police twice from his cell phone around 5 p.m. So remember, that's the time that the examiner said that Felicia was probably killed around. So he probably called them to, I don't know, maybe get help or he panicked and didn't know what to do. But he hung up the phone both times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, everything's adding up. Everything is adding up. But the defense wanted to focus on mitigating factors, which started with Granville's rough childhood in Kingston, Jamaica, of course. But the prosecution wasn't having that. (laughs) And they even used President Ronald Reagan as an example, a white man at that. So they basically said President Reagan's dad was an abusive alcoholic and he became (laughs) extremely successful. So he can do it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, I, I get what you're trying to go here, but don't do that. But this don't is also still this. America, and he is a black immigrant. Right. <laughs> don't compare him to a white man who's now the president, who was the president. Wealthy don't white man. Yeah. Okay. You know, it was a stretch. But the defense presented a doctor named Dr. Eisenstein. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. his last name, who was a licensed psychologist specializing in clinical neuropsychology to testify to Granville's mental health. The doctor concluded that Granville exhibits signs of unequivocal brain damage resulting from prior instances of impact trauma to the frontal lobe of his brain. And as a result of this trauma, he exhibits neuropsychological deficits, executive functioning deficits, impulsivity, and problems with judgment and decision making when under stress. Okay, but he literally sounds like a teenager. So, yeah, you could say that there's a teenager in a grown tail man's body. Right. But does that warrant murder? Right. It's like, oh, you're naming all these things? I go through the exact same things <laughs> on a regular basis. Am I murderous? Does exactly. that give me an excuse? Look at him. Kristen, look at him. He okay, just look looks how he's dead. Looking. Completely dead inside. And this is a murder trial for a nine-year-old girl. And he doesn't give two shits. He makes me sick. Ugh. And like, honestly, let's be real. Even if he does have all of these mental deficiencies because of the trauma that happened, like that's fine. Like mm-hmm. I understand that. Mm-hmm. I hear it. I pity him in that sense because he didn't inflict those energy injuries. He didn't On want himself. to right. be deficient in any way, shape or form. But the heart of a man and the mind of a man are two different things. Mm-hmm. I feel like in his heart, he wanted to do that. I feel like this is something, like I said, that he'd been waiting to do. That he wanted to do this. To do. Because as we talked about already, he did the exact same thing to his ex-wife. Yeah. So the doctor found Granville to exhibit low average intelligence, deficits in the executive functioning of the brain, attention deficit disorder, which is ADD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, which is ADHD, and post-traumatic stress disorder, which is PTSD. And I think this is complete and utter bullshit. And it pisses me off that you even have to pay for experts to speak on the stand. They don't just do it for free. You know, you have to pay these people. And this man got an IT certificate. He graduated high school. 
he did these things. He worked at a communications company where he was building cell phone towers. And you mean to tell me he's, you're telling me he has low average intelligence? Nope. Wow. Nope. I love how you just put that two together. That is so true. Just He's bull. hotel doing things, like <laughs> making moves. But now he's stupid. But now he's dumb. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sir. Hotel influencing people out here that are slower than him with no injury to blame. <laughs> Shout out to Ebony. <laughs> Shout out to Ebony. But now he's the dumb one. Yeah. Hmm. The doctor also acknowledged that the alleged incident where Granville suffered head injuries were mostly self-reported with no records or documentation to corroborate them. So it could be just complete bullshit. But the, doc- the doctor still said his professional opinion suggests that Granville is mentally deficit and committed the offense while he was under extreme mental or emotional disturbance. AKA me on my period. AKA <laughs> like, me on my period. Like, like I'm really just trying to figure out what outs are you trying to give him? You, there's no outs. Nobody yeah. asked Granville to tell Ebony to bring the girl over to his mother's house. Like, right. were you under distress then? Mm, exactly. No, exactly. were you Were you just plotting? You was plotting. First degree murder. He's charged. He was plotting. You know, there was planning. There was cover up the whole nine. After only deliberating for a few hours, the jury found Granville Ritchie guilty Guilty. of first-degree murder, sexual battery, and child abuse. You're not about to play with us over there looking how you looking. Play with my else, not a... Wow. Now, Ebony Wiley, remember her. Mm -hmm. She testified on behalf of the prosecution at Granville's trial, but she was still facing criminal charges herself. Right which I'm happy about. She deserved. Yes. Felicia yes. was in that crossroad because of her. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And this is what she's looking like. So oh, God, she pleaded guilty in 2020 to providing false information to law enforcement in a missing persons case involving a child at her sentencing hearing. Felicia's mom and other family members took their turns, basically cussing her out as they should. Wow. One said, quote, how could you be so stupid to leave my sister with a man you didn't even know that she didn't even know? I hope you rot in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Every time. Like that's, that's, ooh, are you dumb? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. They had to. But I could see remorse in Ebony's eyes. Yeah. I could generally see her just looking like, oh, damn. Just done messed up, dog. <laughs> like, right, right, right. Like, but girl, over a man. Late. Mm-hmm. Over a man. Felicia's grandma said, quote, you didn't call 911. Why didn't you call 911 when my baby was missing? Because Ebony got back to the apartment at 5 p.m., but the she didn't even call anybody until she was about to leave, which is around like 10, 11. And she sure didn't call the popo. No, she was high and, you know, having sex. Like she chose to do her even though she knew Felicia was missing. Even though she knew Felicia was missing. In response, Ebony said, quote, I'm sorry, I made a wrong decision, a not thinking decision. I'm so embarrassed and heartbroken, end quote. But in the same breath, she claimed she didn't deserve jail time. And when the judge asked her like why she felt that way, she said, quote, because it wasn't intentional. And then the judge said, quote, it wasn't intentional to lie. (laughs) And And Ebony said, I didn't do it on purpose. And the judge said, you did do it on purpose. And Ebony goes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't deserve jail time. I'm sorry. I don't deserve it. And the judge said, that's the wrong answer. Period. <laughs> like, judge, don't let her off the hook. It's like let you her plan get on my top. all she wants. Right. Tell her what it is. Ebony was sentenced to 75 days in jail. Plus 75 five days? Yes, Kristen. Plus five years probation. That's getting know. off easy, in my yeah. opinion. I agree. It was... It was a light charge. I would even have charged her with being an accomplice. I think That's her I think her testimony at the trial, you know, she gave that in return for a plea deal. So For sure. And the plea deal was wonderful. So good for, for you, Ebony, that you took that plea deal, but at the same time, you, you have a baby girl's head on you now. Yeah. Like I know people make mistakes, I know, but in in a, a situation like this, it's hard for me to be like Wish you the best, Stephanie, you know, because where's Felicia? Felicia's not here, and that's your fault and Granville's fault. 
You know, and this is the type of stupidity that makes you just want to shake a person and be like, why would you do that? Where was your friends? Somebody needed yeah. to just tell you, girl, come on, get yeah. up. Shake you, shake you. What are you doing? Shake you. Trying to be somebody's god mama. You need to take care of your dog on self. Right. During Granville's sentencing, Felicia's mom, which is named, she's named Felicia as well, spoke to the court about Granville. And it's about a two minute clip. It's worth it. I really want you guys to hear it because it really just puts into perspective like, you know, this little girl is gone. Kayla, play it. Okay. Um, also, I just want to say that I've waited 2,310 days for this day to come. I am here to stand as a wounded mother. I'm here wearing all black because I'm here to bury this Jamaican today. Because by the time he's long gone, my eyes may be closed. Anyway, ensuring certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we command to Almighty God, our brother, Grand Virgin, and we command his body to the ground at its resting place. I want to thank everyone, like I say, for putting up with me because he took away her innocence, her purity, her everything to get married, to bear children, just life itself. Some days, like I said, I don't know if I'm coming or going. I wake up, I think about her. I lay down, I think about her. I'm on so many different medications and that's, that don't even help. The only thing I regret today is that I cannot ice for his fate. And that would be for him to be hung, for him to feel what my daughter felt over and over and over again. It took him three times to strangle her, to get her actually gone. And you know, I feel like death is the appropriate my heart hasn't changed. And all I know, he needs to be like her. Wow. And I know she over there looking at him like, ooh. I mean, you can see Sick she ass. is she is irate. I mean, hurt, obviously, but mad as hell. <laughs> mad she as said hell. And 2,310 days of waiting. Of waiting. She thanked the people for dealing with her because I know she was calling them every day. Six years, you know, she had to wait for this so it was just really powerful to just hear she's on medication i mean that shit really messes you up and people don't think about that when they do such terrible stuff like this they don't care who it affects and it's just horrible and i feel so bad for felicia both felicia's both felicia's Ugh. okay so the judge her name was judge cisco then said the following I've thought long and hard about what I was going to say to you. First, I am in awe of your bravery and your tireless advocacy for your daughter and the fact that you were able to sit through this trial with the horrific facts. You're a better, stronger woman than I am. That is true. I think most parents have a moment when a child runs away from them. They can't find a child. A call or text message goes unanswered for a period of time. Each parent has that sick feeling of dread that something happened to their child. For most parents, that moment passes, but for a few unfortunate ones, it doesn't. Instead, it becomes a first step of a never-ending nightmare you never wake up from. My heart breaks for you. I know you're a woman of deep faith. I know that you know that you and Felicia will have a joyous reunion. I wish you all the best. End quote. Wow. Oh, so wow. beautiful. That was beautiful. And then she said to Granville, quote, I don't know what your spiritual leanings are. However, if you do ever pray to a higher power, either now or at some point, and you truly seek forgiveness, I hope that it is granted. I do still see the humanity in you. May God have mercy on your soul, Mr. Ritchie. Hmm. So she said that. And then as of September 11th, 2020, she sentenced 43-year-old Granville Ritchie to death. Woo! Lord. And it's just not looking good for Granville. 
He is appealing his conviction, but no one cares. I hope he stays in there forever. Granville looks like he's... Death he looks, has already overcome him. He looks like a dirty penny. He looks like a smushed, russet potato. He looks... <laughs> I hate it, and it's not giving. Why do you have to say rusty potato? <laughs> That's exactly what I see. Just with the spuds and everything, old one. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a spud. I can't. Anyway, <sighs> I'm just so happy that they sentenced him the way that they sentenced him. Yeah. Because... As we continue to talk about these different cases and stuff, I realize I am an advocate of the death penalty. I, just, <laughs> I really am. And mm-hmm. I it's hard to even say that out of my mouth because yeah. I know exactly what that means. But yeah. yes, someone like Granville, I would not I'm not gonna sit here and say he deserved what he got, but what I say mm-hmm. is what he did get is deserving of the crime. Right. Period. Definitely. Well, that's our case for this week, you guys. Shout out to Nelly Fiasco for requesting it. Hey, Nelly. I didn't really like this one. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> no, I didn't like it. I hate child cases. We have so many requested. And y'all are just going to have to work with me and give me time. Because how my mental health is set up. <laughs> Can't do it. But- child cases are hard. Mm-hmm. Very hard. Because you want to punch and stab the person who did it over and yeah. over and over again. Yeah, I feel like they turned me into a monster. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. We want to know what you think. So you know where to hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, everywhere. If you enjoyed the episode, please leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify because it really helps just get the word out about our show. And, you know, tell everybody you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All of that. (laughs) Every time. And before we go, be safe. Protect your peace. And protect your space. So we don't have to cover your case, friend. Bye. Bye. You have a right to kill me. I have a right to do that. But you have no right to judge me. <laughs>